and lock this room. This room is now locked. Uh, I am going to talk about, because I, I feel it's important, um, talk about the, the vaccine, and it wasn't that bad, and all that fun stuff. Yeah, that's what I say we start with Bitwarden, because I think that's really, there were a yeah. lot of questions, so. Yeah. All right, I am ready. Twitch looks good. Okay, what number is this? 263. Okay, you ready? Yep. <clears throat> okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode, I just lost it, 263, sorry, 263 of the Security Podcast here in the N30 Network. My name is Hayam, who had to put on a blue shirt because he was wearing a green shirt, and Tom figured this out beforehand. I I was kind of kind of hoping we would just go live with the green shirt and just have, like, a floating head behind a wall of cameras, but... Uh, this has know. happened in the past. I mean, it, it has. It's one of those I wear. If you don't, if anybody cares, Lands End T-shirts. You get them on sale. They're eleven bucks. They're pretty good. And I I don't like branding, so they have I have all the different colors. Anyway, that's me. But I heard this one the other day. People are not listening to podcasts episodically like what we're doing. This is episode two sixty three. They're looking for the really awesome title and just listening to that. I, I think that. Like Pocket Cast and Overcast and Spotify and all them are are not are basically are scrolling whatever that means and looking for topics. So, just some insider when we did a WhatsApp episode, not even on this podcast, on the old and thirty podcast, it got like something like five thousand listens. And we did something recently again, I think with WhatsApp that got a large number of listens because I think people are looking for that. They're so we really should step up our SEO game and come up with that. But then again. I really don't care. I've been watching a lot of YouTube lately, and I swear it's it's thirty seconds of everything is. Uh, please, if you like this, please subscribe, like, and comment. I'm like, how many times do I need to hear that? We know we like we, we know that anyway. But but I do I do have a question for you. Is the in thirty network and specifically a security in thirty brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends or Nord VPN or Audible? Mm -hmm. No, not ExpressVPN either. Not okay. aud not Audible. Yeah. Not no, my pillow. Not Pillow Cube. Not uh, Pillow instead of a house. So your whole house is just a collection of pillows. <laughs> no, we we don't take any sponsorship. We would like to take sponsorship from people who want to work with us, who have a product that we believe in. We would absolutely love that. You can find us and message us, and we would love that. However, we don't. We it's it's one of those. I don't want to tell you to go to all these websites because we don't want to do affiliate ads unless we need to, but we'd rather you just send us money. Like if you like the show, just uh, we'll give you the Bitcoin address or whatever and or PayPal and uh, just send us money. Right, you know who a lot of you know who I would love to get to sponsor us? I would love to get Bitwarden to sponsor us. Uh, because I just finished moving uh, from last pass to Bitwarden, like I've been threatening to do forever. Um, and you know, it worked exactly how you said when we, we covered this last time when you moved. It was easy. There were a couple things that uh, Bitwarden wouldn't import like automatically because they were like giant text fields, like PGP private keys and, and stuff like that. So I didn't have to like take those out and put them in a different file and then just attach that file to like an item in the password vault. But that was honestly it. It was less than an hour's worth of work and... I'm off of LastPass, and now I've got Bitwarden I everywhere, and it just works. I wouldn't say an hour. I mean, so for the average person, I mean, we're not average people, but for the literal average person, I think it's like 10 minutes. Yeah, if that. Like it's um, The hard part is you have to do it on a, on a computer. It doesn't have to be PC. It's PC Mac, but you have to be able to download your LastPass export file which is a little crazy that it's completely unencrypted, which is a little scary. However, by nature of it, it has to be. Yeah. Uh, and then Bitwarden has to import it. The problem is, uh, I think there's a 10,000 character limit. Now, how many people have 10,000 characters in the secure note? I do, Tom does, because we have, like you said, PGP private keys. Um, but that was my thing. So I, I made sure I had a backup of, again, that exported file and that's not a, ter a terrible bad idea to maybe print 
to print it out and put it in a safe deposit box or or throw it through some encryption, uh, some VeraCrypt or whatever it is. But to have that so you have it is not a terrible idea. And I think 10 minutes, you're, you're holding used, up your USB stick. Yeah, grab, throw, throw like a VeraCrypt volume on here or use GPG, uh, God forbid, to just encrypt that single file and throw it on a stick, throw that in the safety deposit box and you're good. I actually do have lots of uh, like over time backups of my last pass vault and, and now my Bitwarden vault because you never know when you're going to need it. So I've got a lot of backups. All encrypted. And what I do, what I do is because I do trust my wife, but I do have an envelope sealed in our firebox with my master password on it, sealed. The keyword there is sealed. And just if you change something, update it. So it's not saying, hey, how do you go to LastPass? It's, hey, go to Bitwarden to get it or whatever it is. The other cool thing about Bitwarden that I didn't really notice is they had the TOTP keys, which yeah. I haven't set up yet. So from my understanding, it doesn't, uh, what's it called? It doesn't put in the six digit code. It just has it in case you lose your device. I think that's what the functionality. I thought you could enable it to put it in automatically, but again, I haven't turned that on either. So I, I do like, it's kind of bad. I do like an amount of separation between my password manager and my two factor, but I also take the keys from the two-factor and I've been putting in the password manager anyway as my own kind of like insurance backup against me losing yeah. the device and losing all my keys. So maybe I'll just use the feature. It's there anyway. Why not? I mean, I do have a note with all the one-time passwords, which is probably obviously not the right answer. But anyway, if you join our Signal group, we do talk about this and people have basically said my, my initial review was spot on. It's LastPass but blue. And people are like, what does that mean? It's literally LastPass, but blue. It's, the only negative things blue. are, it's blue. Um, it, the text fields in LastPass have a little asterisk next to it that you can click right there. But if you if you have multiple uh, username and passwords for different stuff, you have to go anyway to the top right corner and it's there. So if you just get in the habit, again, it's there. Now, the one thing we, we did talk about right before the show was, so the idea is how can you get around all these things? So... Tom said to me, hey, I'll put you on my family plan. I have all these spots. And I said, hey, I'll pay you half and and we can just share them because it's fine. So the pro the question is, and now LastPass does this the right way. If you don't want to share anything, you don't have to share anything. But it feels like we just quickly tested it that you do have to share. And that's not necessarily a good thing if you're sharing it between people, even that you're friends with, because all friends at some point become enemies. So Generally I don't want that yet. It looks like, and, and please, you know, if if somebody's a, a bit more an expert and we're just we're just being dumb, please let us know. <laughs> we we would much rather be dumb and have this thing work the way we want it to than than not. But uh, basically, since I'm the admin of like the family organization that I've got set up for for Bitwarden, like my wife and I, I can see anything that's shared into those family collections, um, which is fine right for for a family account that's kind of what we want to do right like stuff like hulu and netflix and bank passwords and all that like boring fun stuff uh is in there um but when i added heim to it i i made sure to deselect all those uh all those collections so you couldn't see anything when you logged in right it's totally blank yeah but because you didn't have any collections shared with you you couldn't add anything so i made one just for you the downside with that though is when you put stuff in there because I'm the admin of the family organization, I could see it. So there's not really a way to kind of separate, oh, hey, I run the family account, but I don't want to see the stuff you put in there. And yeah, since I'm the admin, I get access to it. It just, it basically prevents me from sharing the, the family account in wider circles than I would otherwise. Um, it's not maybe necessarily look, a maybe... bad thing. It's it's 40 bucks a year. I it's 40 bucks for six people. And the idea was, oh, I'll get six people and I'll divide by uh, uh, 40 divided by six. And that's LastPass's business model. All right, you find six people get in a family plan. As long as they're tangentially related to you, you're okay. However, um, and, and again, as I told people, if you can afford to throw money at Bitwarden, absolutely do so. Like absolutely, ab if you can, the $40 shouldn't be a big deal, but like you said, if it's for one person, it's kind of annoying. You get the single plan. And my wife doesn't want anything to do with password manager, so I can't get her to do it. But there are other, like my dad. And the only thing my dad really needs is that trusted contact. So in case he loses his password because he does that, 
uh, I can have a trusted contact instead of going through this whole other rigmarole. So that's the only reason. And for that reason, I don't necessarily want to pay for it. But I, like you said, it's for 40 bucks a year, I'll end up writing it off as a business expense and, and just being done with it. So I just wanted to see, like you said, if that worked. Um, yeah, I, then, I wouldn't say it's it's necessarily something like wrong with Bitwarden or they're worse than LastPass in this regard. Like we, we are quite <clears throat> literally uh, trying to to get the family premium accounts for cheaper than us buying them individually, which is not a, not a supported mode of operation. Uh, so can't really blame them for it. Uh, sounds like their, their business model might be a little bit more uh, watertight than last passes. Well, again, I don't think LastPass is in to make money. Like, I, I don't think so. If you, if you remember last pass was itself and then they got bought out by log me in. And LogMeIn has a really shady pass of just deprecating things, rolling it into other things and everything else. And they were they somehow managed to evade all of that. They raised their prices, but it wasn't outrageous. And then they got bought out by private equity. And now it's how can we make more money? I mean, they're printing money. They, they, they did all the technology to store passwords. is not really anything. So I hey, will give you five gigs. So they rent some AWS space and, and they throw it in there. But... Then they say, hey, if we just raised it a dollar and another dollar and another dollar, so what if people go on the family plans? Like, it doesn't really matter to us, but they can squeeze out more and more and more. Um, one password for the for the other people who like, but they're also subscription model. It's also not that expensive, but people are asking, and Bitwarden saw a tremendous spike, like a huge spike in traffic. And that's great for them. Like, I hope they really, really take advantage of it because they are open source. So if you're, you're giving money right now to an open source foundation. Everything is open source. You can see, you can build from, from scratch. You're literally paying them to maintain it. And that's, and that's what we want. That is a good open source foundation that has some maintainers of it. And they have a free version because most people literally just want to store their passwords. Like that's all they really want to do. Uh, as as somebody who knows a, a small amount uh, about the costs of running data centers and servers and infrastructure, um, I am more than happy to give Bitwarden the cash to you know keep their core product open source and available and transparent for us all to use and self host if we so choose, uh, while giving them the money to uh, not only pay for their hosting costs but <clears throat> feed their families. All about it. Now, let me ask you this, because I have some political opinions on this. Let's say LastPass said, you get to store 500 passwords free, free, and all your devices free. Anything more than 500 is costs. I think 500 is a good number. Make it 1,000. Find what the median is. I don't like putting security products on like on like different tiers, but I feel like most people would have 500 passwords and that's it. Um, I do feel like... Like on one hand, I think you're right. It's not going to really impact anybody, uh, right? The the power users who are storing a bazillion things like like you and me are could right. get affected by that. But even now, like I'm running through the list in my head, I don't think there's 500 passwords I actually care about. I think there are like 200 I actually care about. But the the issue with that is the, the basically the flow chart that gets inserted into people's heads instead of you have a password manager just randomly generate everything and throw it in there. It doesn't matter how trivial let's just not get hacked, right? It, the question then becomes, do I care about this thing enough for it to be secure? And there's a dollar figure associated with that, right? Like I'm gonna have to pay money if I really put things in here that I don't actually care about. Then we get this, the same stratification of, oh, well, this one's my bank password and it's super secure. And this one is like the Yahoo account I made when I was 14 and there's nothing in here and I don't really care about the security of that. And it, it introduces a lot of these kind of problems where people are now stratifying, this goes in the secure bucket and this goes in the everything else bucket. And we all lose for it because stuff gets hacked, people lose accounts, spammers, all that fun nonsense. I mean, I look at it as they give all these premium, the, all these features that I don't really use. Like I'm not storing data. Like on the each password, you can put a picture there, which I guess is nice. But all these things, I just want a database of username and password and that's it. And, and I really think that should be free at this point. I mean, let the premium people pay for, for everything else. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> 
LastPass two factor. I, I I'm okay with that. You want your application? That's fine. If you want your YubiKey, your hardware token, your something else supported, that's going to cost you. Like I'm, I'm not deep down. I'm not okay with it, but I'm okay enough with it. But then you go, but there's all these other features that I feel like just throw in the premium and let everyone and let everyone have. You get username and password, and that's it. Like I don't know. Yeah. Either way, Bitwarden is a very suitable option. If you want more questions, we have a signal group. Find us at in30 on Twitter. I will eventually get back to you. I'm there. Uh, and that's literally what everyone has said. They, they, Everyone who's moved over has said, wow, you were right. It was very easy. It is exactly the same. Like you said, it is just blue. The color is a little different. It is not as polished as LastPass, but it doesn't need to be. So it's not KeePass. So if you use KeePass, KeePass is literally white. Like it looks like an Excel sheet and yeah. it has all the features. And KeePass doesn't have any native apps. So that was one of the other things people are saying. Well, I'll just use KeePass because it's open source and fully. It doesn't have a KeePass app associated. People are writing them. And yes, we can talk about trusting and everything else. But for my password manager, I really wish they would have written something and say, this is our official app and gone from there. They haven't. And it's hard to explain to people. And you have to sync your your databases on Dropbox or Google Drive or wherever else. And I don't want to do that. And I can't tell other people to do it. So, and then you could say, well, it'll pay for it. No, I don't want to do that either. So Bitwarden is the free option. If you have, I think it's $10 or $12 a year individually to send it to them, $40 for your family. I recommend sending it to them. Absolutely. Yeah. And with KeyPass, like sharing passwords and keeping shared passwords synchronized is uh, just kind of a fool's errand. I did it for a while. I had my own like KeyPass infrastructure set up, right? Like KeyPass started on my laptop and then it synchronized the encrypted database off to as many computers as I had, including some stuff in the cloud. Uh, and then I had an Android phone, which ran a local copy of KeyPass and used a local copy of sync thing to keep everything like synchronized with each other. But if I had to give my wife a password, it was copy paste into text message or, or WhatsApp message. And then she throws it in last pass. And then when I change it, it doesn't synchronize over and like, it's, it's a lot of pain. Uh, so yeah, if you're shopping for a password manager, looking for a LastPass escape, I can recommend Bitwarden. It just works. It's just blue. And the other last thing was the sharing of passwords. Uh, so LastPass had two different sharing things, one where the person knew the password and one where they didn't. And I think that the, the, they didn't know the password. is just, like you said, a fool's errand. Like it's, they can figure it out. So it's not as secure, but. It's one of those, if the person doesn't really care and it just works, then fine, whatever. Um, so with that said, that was our, not our main topic. That was our introductory topic. Our main topic are, are these vaccination cards. So Tom has some good news. I've already had the good news. What's yeah. Tom's good news? Yesterday, uh, I got my first COVID vaccine. Uh, so, you know, if, if you want all the gory details, I'm not going to show you the, the nifty little card that's got some some personally identifiable worry, information on it. Um, but uh, yeah, I got I got Moderna. Um, so uh, I did have some side effects, which are important to talk about in all transparency. So got home last night. I was playing uh, a Dungeons and Dragons game online with some friends, you know, online only. We're totally virtual. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I was getting like pretty tired early in the night. And I usually go to bed real late, like around midnight at about eight 30, I was ready for bed. Uh, I definitely got hit with that, that big wave of fatigue had some minor chills, not even like, like I was really sick, but just kind of minor chills is the best way I can put it. Uh, but anyway, I uh, fired up the electric blanket. I took today off of work uh, and just got some sleep. I went to bed at like, 10 30 last night and woke up at 11 30 like i i wasn't sick sick but i clearly needed the bed rest so yeah burned burned a sick day but uh other than that i'm feeling great today uh, i just had to you know sleep most of the day away and take a really really easy morning uh but hey 
it uh, if it keeps me alive, it keeps me protected from COVID, I'm in. Let's go. Uh, so, uh, so I've got about four weeks until shot number two, which is supposed to have even nastier side effects. So I'm ready. I'm buckled up. So I'll add to your side effects. Basically, I felt sick enough that I should take a sick day. But it's one of those I felt I got my shot on Saturday. And on Sunday, I felt like exactly what you described. Morning, I was miserable. I just wanted everyone to leave me alone. I, I had a fever, which which I couldn't go to school with. I couldn't work, obviously. You can't go into the office with. Um, but midday, I was fine. And around 5 o'clock, all the symptoms hit me again. I woke up at 3 a.m. Monday morning. And I'm like, I don't know if I can go to school. But at 5.30 in the morning, when I normally wake up, I was fine. So it's just enough that you should plan for a sick day and just not worry about it. The other good news is most employers um, are fully aware of this. So while they're not going to give you the day off, they'll probably give you time to go get the vaccine or they'll let you take a sick day. Like they won't make it a thing. So the good news is my entire family, everyone I know in my family right now has both shots in. So I'm very happy. I will show you my card because there are some things on it. Just give me a second to hold it up. So this literal piece of paper, this literal piece of paper here is everything, every, like this is your, your gateway to the world. Okay. And the real topic is not the vaccine passport, but this little piece of card stock is so important. And I don't know. And my problem is the last couple of days I've been, I've been looking, how do I replicate this? Not counterfeit this. So let's say I lost this. And Tom's going to, Tom, Tom doesn't want to show you, but there's nothing on his. So I'll let him go. There's nothing on your card. You're muted. I am muted. Yes. Let me, let me find something to cover this with duct tape, duct tape works. Um, no, no. Cause you'll, you'll rip the numbers off. <laughs> no, here, here you go. Just, just like that. All I've right. got a, a physical roll of duct tape here, but like literally there's, there's nothing on here. Like they didn't even fill in my name or anything. Uh, instead the, the information I'm actually hiding, which is the site that I got the injection at the date of the injection, uh, and the specific lot number and expiration date, uh, and type of COVID vaccine. Uh, so, uh, I can tell you that my, my dose, uh, that I, I did get, uh, on, uh, April, April, or I'm sorry, March 30th, uh, does expire on September 10th of 2021. So, uh, they're good for a while as long as they stay in the fridge. Um, Dude, I don't have that. I just have the lot number. Oh, well, all right. Yeah. So, and that, that takes us to our topic. I see. I have a patient number. You don't, your top card with your name and everything. I mean, there's no <laughs> proof other than you could just write your name in. Yeah. They actually and asked so, me, they said, hey, make sure to, to put your name on the top of this before you come in for the next one. I mean, and I have, I got stickers. You didn't get stickers. I like my stickers. I'm actually really bummed about that. I want it like every time I like go to vote in person, I get stickers. See, I have two, I have two COVID stickers and, and I told people like the stickers are a good enough uh, indicator that you got a vaccine. Um, I mean, they're not worth their anything, but. And I guess you can copy them and everything else, but this whole card you can copy. And so the last couple of days I'm going, I, I was actually checking, how do I prove that I've gotten vaccinated? So the U S is talking about a vaccine passport, which in full disclosure, I would, I would welcome, I would welcome a centralized system that has the vaccines because it is a public health thing. I understand that there's libertarians and, and other people that say, no, it's a violation of my freedoms. We, I get all of that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about how do you prove that you got this vaccine? And so there's, so there's actually, there's actually a system through the CDC called IIS, which is state run. So I'm looking there. How do I find, how do you find this out? Like, how do I find this out? And there's no simple way. It looks like they prioritize getting the physical shot in your arm over the paperwork, which is commendable, right? You don't want all these people, like, you, imagine another hour wait while they fill this in, verify the information, everything. No, no, just show up. They verified who you are. The name, name matches. Uh, they, checked, they checked my address. They said that. Now, they were doing something, but I don't know what they were doing. I knew they were putting it into some database, but... I don't know how to access this database. I got mine at Kane University. My wife got hers at the Middlesex County, New Jersey mega site, one of them. 
where there are national guards running it and everything else. But I don't know how you verify this, which leads to people lying about it, which is one problem. Or two, if they make this mandatory and you lose this, how does this little card stock save you? Or maybe they're just hoping that 18 months from now, we're not going to have to deal with this. Like, yeah. And you know, let's, let's be really clear. I, we're, we're not, we're not like bashing the CDC for, oh my God, how, how could you not figure out the paperwork? Um, like they, they're clearly prioritizing, okay, let's get vaccines in stock. Let's figure out who gets them and let's just get some needles and some arms and get this thing over with. Right. They're, they're prioritizing for saving the most amount of healthcare resources. And more importantly, they're prioritizing saving the most amount of lives, right? The more people who are vaccinated, the quicker this thing goes away or the damage is minimized, right? Maybe COVID doesn't ever go away, but vaccinations make sure that we have the minimum amount of human suffering and, and lost life uh, around, right? And that's the right priority. Like there, there is no better priority than that, right? The, the paperwork and stuff, figure it out later. Uh, but now, now that, you know, we had the priorities set, we're all kind of wondering what, what do we do now? Right. How, how do we track this? How do we prove this? Like if, if I want to go to uh, a concert, uh, or, you know, jump on an international flight or, you know, go on vacation to another country or even vacation to like Hawaii, right? How do you prove when, when you're getting in line to check into your resort hotel, that you've had this vaccination, right? And, you know, if it's if it's super easy to lie about, that's dangerous for people who are at risk or couldn't get the vaccination for a wide variety of, of known medical reasons, right? Are you on corticosteroids? Do you have an, a, like um, a disease that suppresses your immune system, right? There's a, a whole lot of reasons why somebody legitimately might not get this vaccine other than, you know, non-scientific bogus information. Um, so how do you figure that out, right? Where's where's the accounting here? And 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 I think like like you said, I would because I know you showed me yours is blank. I would go back and see if you have that patient number when you go. But again, you have to assume that this person holds this card for four weeks for Moderna, three weeks for Pfizer, and and then doesn't lose it. And who knows? If they left it at work. It gets it gets accidentally thrown out and. So I'm asking, how do you do it? Your social security number, there's a database. So you have, your social security number is on the, the flimsiest of all flimsy pieces of paper. And you keep that in your safe deposit box and you can verify it. I, I have a number here, but I don't know if this number is unique to me or is it unique to my system? So this IIS system works with, with, your, with your medical provider. The problem is my medical provider is not my healthcare provider. So they have to have a system. And then I have to call them. I don't know who I call because it was run by the county through the university. So it's it's really strange. And maybe Walgreens or Rite Aid or the, the big pharmacies have a better system. Somebody did say, and I will give this as, a, as, as advice because I think, and then we get into HIPAA, um, which by the way is, is H-I-P-A-A and not H-I-P-P-A, which I, I've gotten wrong. But- Somebody said, take a picture of your vaccination card, call your primary care doctor, the people that you have your immunizations with and have them put it in. Because I guess that's going to be the next concrete, the most next concrete way than other than calling the CDC to verify. So as soon as I can, I'm going to do that. Call my medical provider and say, here's a picture of my card or here's the information. Can you write this down? And because they, they have, an, I guess, a duty to not lie. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I will say, and again, not to be political, uh, for the people saying they can't mandate this, um, private businesses can. And guess what? When you go international travel or when you try to get your kids into public school or whatever it is, there's very few things that you can say that will get you out of it. So I, I maybe maybe private companies, private businesses, concerts, whatever can say, hey, you need this, but maybe they just ask, are you vaccinated? So they have a list of who's not and they maybe can put you in a corner. I don't know what the political ramifications are, but I personally would like to see some sort of passport card. And if you don't want to show it, maybe have a rule there, but. I think I think putting all the unvaccinated people together is probably the most dangerous thing we can do. 
right? It, at least if we had them spread out throughout the vaccinated population, then maybe maybe we could prevent some transmission. But like leaving them off to their own devices in their own corner where they can all be sick together seems uh, kind of cruel. I mean, in a way. I mean, you could do mask if you're not if you won't show us a passport card, you have to wear a mask. I yeah. mean, right? I I I. I I mean that that's that's in line with freedom, right? If you choose to do it, there are private consequences. Again, um, and I and I get it. There may be reasons you don't want to get vaccinated. There may be reasons that you don't want to get the flu shot every year or whatever it is. Uh, maybe they're legit. Maybe they're not legit. But everyone has their reasons. And and yes, you shouldn't be barred for having legit medical medical reasons why you can't get vaccines or having to prove it if that brings discrimination. However, I, I I want to get back to normal as soon as I can. I live in a state where everywhere everything feels open. I have not been not open, but my kids are still not in school, and I'm still not going indoor dining. And I really want to go to indoor dining. I really want to go see my friends and do this again. But I can't do it till everyone's vaccinated, and I have kids. Remember, we don't know if kids can if we can spread it to our kids yet. And there is some science that has good news that says no, but we're not sure yet. And then they're still testing it. I want school to open in September. So whatever it takes to get everyone vaccinated, I, I want to do it. And I want Tom to be healthy and I want everyone Tom's associated with to be healthy and my family. So you see my, my thing, like uh, it's, it's purely, purely selfish, right? I, I don't have, you know, kids to take care of. I don't have really anything I have to do, I can do my job, you know, remotely. There's there's nothing really stopping me at the moment from writing code. As long as I've got a terminal and a hook up to the net, I'm good. Uh, but what I, what I really, really want, I want to go to my buddy's house and he makes some smoked ribs, which are to die for. Uh, I want to go to a barbecue and I want to buy a way too expensive beer at a way too expensive restaurant and have neither the food nor the beer be worth the money I paid for it. And nothing, nothing in the world uh, makes me happier than the thought of sink, sitting down and drinking an overpriced beer at an overpriced restaurant. Like I am ready. Uh, sign me up. I, I might I might even go to a baseball game and pay the what is it? Forty, sixty thousand dollars for for a Bud Light. I, I don't know how much it costs at a baseball game anymore. Uh, it's probably ten dollars. <laughs> I think last time I checked, it was ten dollars for like the littlest <laughs> cup. But but you're right. We want to we want we want to do that. We want to open up. We want to go places, and we don't want to have to worry about us getting sick or spreading this to somebody else or whatever it is, with all the variants and everything else. So so again. I'm hoping that they're, they're going to come out with a system that pro, that some federal database that 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 can say, again, maybe not a passport card, but if you are vaccinated, you can tell the person, the, the bouncer at the front desk that they'll just say yes or no. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know the, the HIPAA compliant way to do this, but let's hope they come up with something. And, and again, keep in, keep in mind that for international travel, like vaccines are a requirement. Uh, in a lot of different places, a lot of countries will say, hey, you know, you, you have to have, you know, a, a tetanus shot or you have to have your, your chicken pox vaccine or MMR or like there's a lot of like really normal standard vaccines. Like, hey, if you're going to come here, you have to have a polio vaccine. Cool. Uh, I would be extremely surprised if the COVID-19 vaccination didn't make it onto all of those countries lists. So what we're going to have is you want to go anywhere, you have to prove it there. Anybody coming in will have to prove it, but domestically you wouldn't have to. But again, I want to go back to less than six feet. I want to go back to, actually, I don't want to go back to less than six feet. I actually like the social distancing. I like the non-stigma of wearing a mask. I hope that carries on. Like if you have the flu or whatever, wear a mask. And I, And people are looking at me, but I really would like to wear a mask in public places. Like, Hey, like, I like, really would like to have a mask. If if you're a hacker and you you care about security at all, so masks will you know keep people from getting sick. Um, it'll you know keep your germs to yourself, keep other people's germs uh, away from you, um, and more importantly, it defeats facial recognition. So like we're getting a win 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 out of this. Uh, and yeah, masks are annoying. I hate masks. I wear glasses. Like masks are are the worst because I become entitled to compens or compensation. 
uh, every time I, I wear a mask. Uh, but, uh, you know, they, they've got and a whole the lot problem of problems. The problem is masks don't protect you. You're protecting somebody else. You're wearing a mask to protect them. But like... There is an amount that it does protect you. It's yeah. right. It's not foolproof. Uh, but, you know, there there is an amount. But if I'm going to a place, if I like in my teenage years going to a sweaty uh, club and, and everyone's there to where going to DEF CON would be awesome for wearing a mask. You have 30,000 of your closest friends there. And if we all wore masks, like you said, the facial recognition, everything else. In fact, but the problem is in Vegas, you're actually not allowed to wear masks. That's actually oh, wow. the thing that they're discussing because Man. of the cameras and everything else. But. Again, it's one of those, I hope the stigma goes away. I would hope that I never have to shake anybody's hand ever again. No more shaking yeah. hands. I'm sorry. I don't want to shake your hand. Um, and just the, maybe we're generally more hygienic, but I don't I don't see that. I, I don't think the hygienic is going to come part of it. We're not hand sanitizing or washing our hands as much, but I'm hoping the social distancing works a lot better. Yeah, And you know what? What actually a benefit is all these food places have now much better pickups and orderings and everything else. Oh, man, that's been the best thing ever is now every restaurant has to have an answer for, well, how do you get your food out to people? Uh, because, like, there's a lot of great restaurants around me. Uh, but, you know, I I'm going to be I'm going to be a little too honest. Some days I don't want to wear pants. Like some days it just having this stuff show up outside my doorstep and I don't even have to interact with anybody. Like I just reach outside, grab the food and like drag it in. Like, I, I don't know, like some sort of horrifying cave creature. I'm that's my lifestyle. No, you have, you're missing the kids aspect. So one thing you don't realize with drive throughs is the reason drive throughs exist is not for laziness, which it does. But if you have kids to unbuckle them from the car seat and everything else, but you have to go. And for whatever reason you have your kids with you, single parent, whatever, you want to get food, you go to the place, you could just stay in your car. You don't have to unbuckle them. It, it defeats the drive through It's like the person can just come out and hand it to you. And yes, you can do all the delivery services. But I like that these companies have paid the ones who wanted to succeed for their own online ordering system. So they're not giving the other companies their 30% fee. And you can either call them up or you can order online and show up and they can come out or you can run right in because it's right there. But I hope all these things stay. I really hope all these things stay. Um, again, if you got your card, uh, if you got your card, please don't lose it. Take pictures of it, throw it into Dropbox. It's not that secure. Like it's not super secure. You just don't want people on the internet to have it. And, and just keep double and triple backups of it. Don't lose it and and we're there we are way over time so i want to end and we will see everyone i don't know there's no news so <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping next week but maybe not uh keep keep your ios devices up to date there were some you know nasty hacks going around the internet that was live so uh run those updates yep. chances chances are by the time you're hearing this episode the automatic updates already kicked in did the right thing so i uh, just check to make sure you don't have an update pending Okay, hey everybody, have a good rest of the day, and we will hopefully see you next week. Bye. See ya. Okay, save. All right, let me shut off Twitch.